Let's go over some ways we can reduce the polygon count of mesh fusion items. So I have two mesh items here, a cylinder and a cube, and I'm going to select the cube and hold Control F to bring up my fusion pie menu, and I'll choose new fusion with selected, which is the topmost option. That makes this cube the primary in a new fusion setup. I'll just move the fusion item uh, right beneath that cube. And then I'm going to select the cylinder and holding Control F, or actually, I'll just drag the cylinder onto the cube and I'll choose Apply Subtraction. And then when I move the cylinder, which is now in a subtractive mode, onto the cube, we get this uh, subtractive operation happening. And it's live, and that's how Fusion works. So let's talk about reducing this. Uh, first, let me just adjust this a little bit. I'll make it a little bit uh, larger in the Z, X axis. And then I'll hold Control F and toggle the source visibility. And I'll also drop the scale tool and Control F to create, update the strip items. That will allow us to uh, select the strip and change the width. So I'll just make that uh, 35 millimeters. Whoops, I accidentally uh, set a material. So 35 millimeters for the strip width. And I'll just change the profile to about 10. I'll also select the fusion item and uh, set its mesh mode to be airtight final with uh, parts. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Uh, now, if I come over to the two fusion source items, the cylinder and the cube, in their properties at the very bottom, they have the fusion subdivs. So if we want to reduce the uh, polygon count, we could technically change the subdivs uh, down to one and you see it lower, or even zero, which will lower it more. Now it will affect the silhouette slightly because we're actually changing the, uh, the source items which uh, impact the fusion item surface. Uh, there's another way though. Uh, this is a little bit, uh, in my opinion, a little bit clumsy, and I think it's a good idea to always keep that around uh, level two. I tend to increase it, uh, not de decrease the fusion subdivs. Uh, but even though this fusion item is a, a procedural item, so we cannot select the polygons uh, or the faces or any of the elements for this uh, fusion item, we can use this fusion item as the source in a merge meshes mesh operation. And this is the procedural way in Modo to uh, duplicate things. So I'm just going to make the fusion item invisible. And then I'll come over to this empty mesh item, which I've named MM for merge meshes. And I'll come over to the uh, mesh ops tab, which is right next to the items list. And then I'm going to add an operator and I'll choose uh, merge meshes. So I'll just type in merge meshes and then double click that. And if I expand the merge meshes uh, operation, we'll see sources. And if I expand that, we'll be able to add a source. So if I click that, we should see the fusion item right here. So here is the fusion item. Uh, now there's a couple differences, or even though it's the same, or it's a duplicate of the fusion item, uh, mesh, you'll notice that our fusion item, if I make that visible, is triangulated. And the merge mesh operation actually uh, gets rid of some of the triangles on the uh, area where the, the two overlapping fusion sources uh, aren't kind of uh, overlapping. Uh, now, another nice thing about this is in the merge meshes mesh app, I can actually select the polygons, which I'm unable to do with the fusion item. Uh, so that's really nice. Uh, now, if I press W for move, we'll get a warning, uh, and that's because we can't use the standard polygon tools with a procedural tool. We have to use all of the procedural mesh operations. Uh, that's not a problem. We have a lot of mesh operations that we can choose from to work with this, so that's really nice. Now, another thing you might notice is that if I double-click this polygon, uh, it's not airtight. So if I select all of the polygons and then hold Control and click on the edges button, which turns into boundary when I have control held, uh, we'll see that we have 512 edge boundaries. So I'm going to use the uh, merge vertex mesh op on top of the merge meshes uh, in order to weld all of the verts together. So I'll just choose merge vertex, or actually that's vertex merge. So here it is. And now when I select all of the polygons, and then hold control, you can see that all edges are selected, and that means this is airtight. Now, 
let's talk about reduction. There is a mesh operation for reducing the polygon count. So I'll just add an operator on top of the vertex merge, and this will be uh, polygon reduce. And right now the number is set to zero, so there's no reduction happening. If I select all of these polygons, you can see in the bottom right hand corner we have 4,003 polygons. What's nice about this polygon reduce mesh operation is that I can change the number right here. So let's say we want a target of, let's do 450. So I'll press 450 and click enter. And you'll see that uh, we're getting some bad results here. But what's nice is there's the legacy mode. And if I click that, uh, we get some serious uh, decimation, some serious polygon reduction. And if I actually select these polygons, you can see we have 449. So that's really close to the 450 target that we uh, set. And I can, of course, bring this up to 1,000. So we reduced it from uh, 4,000 to 1,000. And if I select the polygons, it's just under 1,000 at 994. And if I turn off legacy mode, we can see what we get. And sometimes legacy mode works better on or sometimes uh, the, new ver the new mode works better on organic uh, models. So I'll just keep legacy mode on for this uh, particular case. Now I have some other fusion items in the scene that have been already converted to uh, meshes. And let's just take a look at reducing the polygon count for those. Uh, because each of them will uh, kind of present a different challenge. So I'll make this merge mesh mesh up invisible. And then I'll make this folder visible, which has my mesh fusion output. And if I come over here, you can see we have this kind of abstract shape to the left. We have this uh, hard surface shape here in the middle. And then we have this uh, jack-o'-lantern to the right. And these were all made with mesh fusion. Uh, they're 100% mesh fusion, and they're all airtight at the moment. So for now, let's just take a look at the abstract uh, shape. And if I uh, select all the polygons, you can see we have 66,376. So I'm just going to uh, add the uh, polygon reduce mesh up on top of this. And let's set it down. We'll do a number of, let's do 20,000. So that took uh, about 20 seconds uh, to calculate. And let me select the uh, polygons. And now you can see we have uh, less than 20,000. I can probably even get that down to 15,000. And that took a couple more seconds. And it's looking pretty good. We now have uh, 15,000 or under 15,000. So if we were to set this back uh, in our scene, it would look pretty good. If it were close up, I would probably uh, get rid of the polygon reduce. I can do that just by uh, toggling the visibility of it. That disables the polygon reduce mesh up. Uh, but I'll just leave that on. So next, we'll look at the hardware piece. And this is a little bit more uh, complex. Uh, and again, it's a hard surface piece. It's not very organic at all. So uh, we'll probably wind up using the legacy mode. So on this uh, fusion output hardware piece, I'm just going to once again create the polygon reduce mesh up. OK, and here it is. And before I actually use the polygon reduce, let's see how many uh, polygons we're working with. And we have 746,355 polygons, so that's quite a bit. So the polygon reduce is going to uh, take a little while to calculate, but let's actually set that down to, let's do 200,000. OK, so that took about a minute and a half. I sped that up. Um, and we're getting these kind of spikes shooting off. So let's see what happens when we toggle the legacy mode. So that took about uh, another minute. But as you can see, toggling the legacy mode on uh, helped us tremendously. We no longer have those spikes. Uh, and this number can be adjusted. But let's see how close we got to our target of 200,000. So we're at 199,992 polygons. So that's great. All right, so now let's have a look at our pumpkin. Now this is kind of halfway between organic and uh, hard surface, so I'm kind of not sure how the polygon reduce mesh up will work on this. Uh, the outside is kind of uh, organic, it's this round shape, but the areas that are cut into it are a little bit hard surface. We have these right angles, uh, which might throw the polygon reduce for a loop. 
So I'll select my fusion output pumpkin and let me just quickly see how many polygons we have. So 93,571, so close to 100,000. Uh, let me just add the operator. We'll choose once again the polygon reduce mesh op. And here it is. So I'll just change the number. Let's start with 30,000. And actually that's looking pretty good in the standard mode. We don't have legacy mode enabled. Uh, I'm not seeing any spikes shooting off, so let's have a look at the actual polygon count. So 30,000 on the money. That is exactly 30,000 polygons. So that is pretty good. Uh, we started off with, I believe, let me just disable this, uh, 93,000. And with the polygon reduce enabled, we hit our target of 30,000. So the polygon reduce is an incredibly uh, powerful and flexible mesh operation that I would highly recommend using uh, when you have to reduce the number of polygons on your mesh.